All right, well, as we go into our program, again, this is the State of the City Address. And today, for you guys, we've got our mayor, Mr. Mike Foreman. Mike Foreman's a former NASA astronaut. He grew up in Wadsworth, Ohio, and earned a BS in aerospace engineering from the U.S. Naval Academy and an MS in aeronautical engineering from the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School. He became a naval aviator and later graduated from the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School. In 1998, he moved his family to Friendswood, where he was selected by NASA for their astronaut program. He's a veteran of two space flights, STS-123 in March 2008 and STS-129 in November 2009, and has logged more than 637 hours in space, including 32 hours and 19 minutes of EVA in five spacewalks. After 40 years of government service, Mike left NASA in 2015 to join uh, Venturi Outcomes LLC, a Houston-based construction project management and consulting firm started by his wife, Lori Foreman, in 2007. He currently serves as the president of that company. Mike and Lori have three grown children and two granddaughters. Mike was elected to the Friendswood City Council in 2016 in May 2018, he was elected mayor of the city of Friendswood, where he presides over Friendswood City Council meetings and supports all city departments and employees. His current term ends in May 2021. So give a big round of applause for our mayor, Mr. Mike Brown. Hey, thanks, Dad. I thought, I thought my term might end while that, uh, that introduction was going on there. <laughs> But I appreciate it. My mother wishes she was here to hear that, sure. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Chamber of Commerce. Thanks to, to uh, New Hope Church for letting us use this space. It's great to be here and talk to you a little bit about the state of the city. You know, I, I got a little advice from Harold Whitaker, former mayor Harold Whitaker. He said, Mike, this is the first state of the city address that's being given in a church. You can't lie. <laughs> Of course, Harold didn't have to worry about that when he was mayor because, you know, he never did a State of the City address. We just started doing those this century. Ooh. Where is Harold? Harold? Harold's not here, so. We have a great city staff, of course. You all know about that. I'm going to talk about them a little bit more later, but, uh, you know, we couldn't do all this without all the volunteers that help out the city and, and, uh, so if you are a volunteer that is on one of our boards, commissions, committees, corporation, would you stand right now so we can recognize you all? We couldn't do it, I'm serious. Thank you so much, yes, yes. See, volunteerism is strong in this city and, and it's true that we could not do this without all the volunteers that help us with all the different committees and commissions and boards and everything. So thank you all. All right, so uh, last May we had an election. You guys, voters elected me mayor. Man, I got a big head. <laughs> <laughs> I was standing too close to the camera, man, I guess. Um, you elected me mayor. Uh, you elected Robert Griffon uh, to replace me in my my term, I, I resigned my term as council member to run for mayor, so there was one year left. Robert stepped up and ran for that term and w was elected, and uh, we also elected Trish Hanks to her first three-year term, her first term, and uh, Steve Rocky re-elected to his uh, third term. Yes. Uh, this May, we're going to have another election, and uh, Robert Griffon is going to run again for that, that seat that he occupies now. And, he is running unopposed, so he'll be elected on May 4th. Carl Gustafson is uh, also running again, and he has an opponent, Brent Aaronwert. So they are, uh, we'll find out May 4th. I want to thank all my colleagues on city council, uh, starting with Mayor Pro Tem John Scott, Council Member Steve Rocky, Council Member Sally Branson, Council Member Trish Hanks, Council Member Robert Griffon, and Council Member Carl Gustafson. You know, we're all volunteers uh, on these positions, and uh, we really appreciate that you trusting uh, us to, to uh, serve the community as your city council. So, uh, you all remember Hurricane Harvey. 
We had more than 2,700 homes impacted during Hurricane Harvey. Uh, 2,400 of them flooded uh, and another 300 damaged. Um, we've been pursuing buyout and elevation applications since that time. Currently, we have five uh, applications in with uh, people like FEMA, uh, Texas Division of Emergency Management, uh, the Government Land Office, Texas General Land Office, and so uh, these are all in different stages of approval, so uh, bear with us. We're hoping to get word back in the next weeks and months on how those uh, applications are, are, are going. So, we, you know, as somebody who flooded during, during the storm, I, I, I feel for everybody that's still waiting on these recovery dollars. The city also took a pretty big hit during the storm, and uh, since, uh, since the storm, we've recovered from the state and from FEMA $5.2 million. Now, most of that money we spent out of our coffers to clean up after the storm, and, and FEMA has, uh, has repaid us for all that work that we had done. Uh, we, right now, in process from FEMA, we, st we have another $3.2 million in work, and total recovery applications that we have in the works right now, $18.3 million. So, those are just recovery dollars and storm resiliency dollars. So, you know, not only to recover from the storm, but to also make our town a little tougher for the next storm, you know, defend ourselves a little better in the next storm. So resiliency dollars too, including that $18.3 million. Soon after last uh, May's election, we formed a, uh, we city council formed a subcommittee uh, to look at drainage because, you know, we all thought that, hey, we might not have a lot of resources money-wise to put towards uh, fixing our drainage problems, but we got a lot of smart people in Friendswood. So we had a lot of people step up. We have citizens on that subcommittee. We have council members. Steve Rocky and Carl Gustafson lead that subcommittee. We have a lot of city staff involvement. We have Randy Weber's office. We have Greg Bonin's office. Larry Taylor's office are involved in that. Uh, thank you, Faye Picard, uh, for, for being involved. We have uh, Ken Clark. Commissioner Ken Clark is on that team. And then we also have Army Corps of Engineers involvement, Harris County Flood Control District personnel and Galveston County Consolidated Drainage District helping us out. So these people have been uh, working on this since uh, last June. They've had 35 meetings all told. They meet every Wednesday night. I'm sure they're all kind of sick of looking at each other. But uh, over the course of this time, they have uh, contracted with a professor at Rice University. Um, this, this map right here kind of shows that's Clear Creek. And this is the Clear Creek watershed right here, this white line. So Friendswood's down in here. So uh, they've given us progress reports in October and December, and we're expecting their final recommendations Monday night. So if you're at all interested in what, what they've been doing, Monday night at 7 o'clock, they're going to report out to us, and we're looking forward to hearing that. We haven't just sat back and waited for our drainage committee to, uh, to report out. We've been working with a lot of our drainage partners on projects all throughout the city to try to make us uh, a little more resilient, a little more flood proof. So. Galveston County Consolidated Drainage District is a great partner. Uh, with them, we have uh, started a regional detention pond at 1776 Park and Imperial Estates, the old Imperial Estates Section 1 that we bought out after Allison. So in concert with uh, 1776 and those, those lots, we're putting in a detention pond, which will also act as a park. So we'll have a park slash detention pond over there to help us uh, provide some help when the, when the water starts coming down. Galveston County is also helping us with clearing and desnagging activities along Clear Creek. You know, on the Clear on the Galveston County side, they help us clear out all the all the brush and debris and keep the water flowing. And then we're also looking at some land to acquire to do some high water bypasses throughout the main stem of Clear Creek, which means, you know, Clear Creek through Friendswood just serpentines back and forth, back and forth. And if we can just uh, uh, do, do the right things to make when the water rises, allow it to flow a little more on a straight, straighter path through Friendswood, that will help us all. So we're looking at ways to do some high water bypasses throughout the main stem. Harris County Flood Control District is also one of our partners and we're, we're uh, doing some, a couple of different regional detention ponds with them. We're doing one at Dixie Farm in Clear Creek, uh, just on the uh, Friendswood side on Dixie Farm Road. There's a, there's a piece of property there. A developer actually had it for a while and was thinking about doing something there. And we talked, uh, we talked Harris County Flood Control District into purchasing that property, and they're going to put a detention pond there, which will help us a lot. We're also looking at uh, behind Forest Bend, uh, behind Fire Station Number Three, there at FM 528, 
along Clear Creek doing a detention pond there as well, which would be like the 1776 park down uh, upstream a little bit where it would be a park and a detention pond. And we're also uh, getting Harris County now to start clearing and desnagging their side of the creek as well, which, uh, which helps because if you just desnag one side, it's not as good as if you desnag both sides. Okay, this is uh, another partner, State of Texas General Land Office. Um, we have uh, worked with the GLO on some buyouts and uh, to install a detention pond at Deepwood. Deepwood is where uh, St. Mary's Creek, Mary's Creek, I'm sorry, and Coward, Clear Creek and Coward's Creek, a lot of creeks in this town, Clear Creek and Coward's Creek come together. That's where our old public works building was before it was condemned because it flooded during Harvey. And, so uh, it, purchasing some properties at the end of Deepwood there will allow us to put another detention pond there and that'll help quite a bit. Uh, we're also working with GLO on buyouts and detention at Frenchman's Creek, which you may not be familiar, Frenchman's Creek's a development right behind uh, Polly Ranch on the creek side there and we're, we're buying out some properties there so that we can also do some detention in that area which will also help. So you can see we're doing a lot uh, of uh, flood stuff, drainage stuff, Moving on now, uh, like we do every year, City Council last fall, we worked through our budget cycle and we approved a budget for the town and uh, we set the tax rate at 53 cents, which was pretty, pretty close to what we had in 2018 for a tax rate. The, the tax rate of 53 cents is actually equal to the effective tax rate, which means the effective tax rate is the tax rate that you uh, would collect the same amount of money as the previous year on those properties that were taxed in both years. So it's basically the same amount of money coming into the city. And over the last 40 years, the city's tax rate has decreased nearly 25 cents. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. It's a lot of people getting involved in that. Oh, EMS, okay, on January 1st, we began collecting for our EMS runs. I think we were the last city probably in Texas that did not charge for ambulance rides. We are to collect that. Collections are starting to come in. Uh, when, when you call for an ambulance in town now, uh, we're gonna bill your insurance company. Uh, for a fir few, first couple of months, we didn't see a lot of money coming in. There's a little bit of a lag when, when you're billing people like Medicare and insurance companies, and now the money is starting to come in, so that's, that's a good thing, and I, I think the service is awesome, and, and uh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, outstanding job that our EMS team does. Roy, I see all you guys back there. I don't wanna try to name everybody, but yeah, we have a great EMS team. Thank you, thank you. We're doing some residential development here. Uh, we've built 141 single family home last year in, in, in Friendswood. That's a lot of residential home building. We have uh, five different developments in various stages. Of course, everybody knows about West Ranch. West Ranch is still building out out there. Uh, Adam Hill here in uh, Sterling Creek, still building homes there. Uh, in, in some stages, uh, Friendswood Trails is uh, hasn't started building yet. They got most of their infrastructure in out there and they're getting ready to start building. Perry Homes is gonna start building out there soon. And uh, Georgetown, uh, this uh, development near Alvin just got, just got approved. We're talking about Avalon. This is another property that we're gonna actually discuss Monday night. So um, Avalon is not, could be another potential uh, neighborhood, new development that we're gonna put in. So that's the residential side going great and the commercial side is also going really well. I love this uh, new building that David Stanley Photography and Office Suites put in over there about a block off the main drag uh, near the senior center. Uh, it's a multi-purpose use. He's got his photo, photo studios down here. He lives upstairs with his family. It's a pretty nice uh, building. Uh, Louis Tanos, of course, is finally getting going on his Tanos 3 building there on Friendswood Drive. I, you know, he's finally had more than two days of dry weather in a row and he's able to start pouring concrete, so I know they're going pretty, pretty fast and furious over there. Uh, Shadow Bend Office Park is going in. That looks really good. Adam, that, that, that looks really good from the street. I like that. I haven't been inside, but it looks really good. Over here at 528 and 518, this is Vergata Commons. Uh, in this uh, development here, we already have an urgent care. Uh, eventually, there'll be a Chick-fil-A here. There'll be a Mod Pizza, Chipotle, uh, some office, uh, an office building down here in the end with maybe a dentist's office. Anybody nodding their head? Thank you. <laughs> I see you. 
Uh, comprehensive plan, we're, we're taking a look at our comprehensive plan. A comprehensive plan is a little bit of a misnomer because comprehensive plan is a collection of plans. You know, it kind of gives us our strategic uh, plan for what we're going to do in the city as far as streets, you know, mobility, uh, making sure we have enough water, making sure we have enough sewer to support all of our residents, uh, what we're going to do in case of an emergency, a fire, or another flood. Uh, all that kind of stuff is in our comprehensive plan in different sections of our comprehensive plan. Things that we've been working on recently, a citywide traffic study. I don't know if you're like me, but you've noticed that the traffic is kind of increasing in Friendswood a little bit. And so we, we have contracted with a company to come out and study our traffic and tell us you know, what they recommend that we do about this traffic here. So that's ongoing. Uh, we did a pavement assessment plan last year and completed that assessment. Now we know uh, in rank order which are most, uh, our worst streets and our best streets so that we can start working on our worst streets and, and doing maintenance on those. So you've seen us start to do that. We've, we've hit the, uh, the asphalt uh, streets. I think I got another slide here in a minute, but I'll talk about that. But uh, we're working on those streets. And then we've also uh, done a downtown improvement plan recently. Our, Friendswood Downtown Economic Development Corporation, who is sort of charged with figuring out what we should do with that eighth of a cent sales tax money that goes to economic development, which by the way is bringing in about a half a million dollars a year now. So uh, they're the ones that are figuring out what we're going to do to spend that money and they've gone out and, and a, we've gotten a downtown improvement plan, something sort of to, to work off of. So that's going great. Streets and sidewalks. Um, Greenbrier Drive sidewalk is in. I don't know if you've been out there, but uh, that's, that's uh, from the high school going down towards Wilderness Trails there. Uh, brand new, they just painted it uh, the other day, so it's, it's fresh. Uh, I talked about the asphalt contract. We, uh, we just finished uh, with a bunch of the, the streets that are asphalt, re replacing them, and uh, we spent $1.7 million. And, this money it, for streets maintenance is coming from that three-eighths of a cent sales tax. So if you do the math in your head quick, um, that's bringing in about $1.5 million a year. So um, because we had sort of built up a little bit of that tax income for, for a while, uh, we have a little bit to spend, a little more than a million and a half dollars. We spent one point seven on a asphalt, uh, $5 million on Blackhawk to finish Blackhawk. Blackhawk's the last project that was a uh, 2013 bond project that we're finishing up right now. So, so Blackhawk is looking good. And then coming soon, we're gonna spend a million and a half dollars to go out for a contract to start working on those concrete streets that are, that are in the worst shape. So, and we know from our pavement assessment which streets to start on. And, and if you wanna know when your street's gonna get that uh, maintenance, you can look on our website, and I think we have them in, in order how we're gonna tackle those. Up here, this is 528, okay? Boulevard, uh, they're doing the engineering on this right now, the design work, we're going to start seeing that construction go in soon. So uh, here's uh, Sterling Creek out here, and uh, this part of the street, the road is in. Uh, we'll call this Friendswood Lakes Boulevard now, eventually it might be called Friendswood Parkway because it's going to link up eventually all the way to Pearland Parkway way up here and down here to League City Parkway. This is, this is West Ranch back here where it's going and uh, ties into the streets at the back of West Ranch and then when League City ties into the rest of that, it'll go all the way to League City. So that, that is coming soon. Water and sewer, we spent the fall talking about water and sewer because we realized we needed to do about $32.5 million worth of infrastructure work on water and sewer uh, over the next seven years. So most of these things, these projects, are, are we don't really control completely. For instance, we have regional partners on things like our surface water plant where we get from southeast uh, Houston surface water. We have nine other partners that we're in, in, uh, involved with there. So when they say it's time to put in this 42-inch uh, wa main water line that we feed off of, and Friendswood, your share is $12 million, well, you know, we got to be ready to, to put up the money. So uh, we just are in the process of issuing $32.5 million worth of bonds for that. Those bonds are paid for by your water and sewer rates. Um, so uh, we're doing all the things that, w that we need to do to make sure that we don't have any disruption in service. And even though uh, you're going to see a little bit of increase in, in your water rate here uh, coming soon this summer, uh, we still are proud that we have the lowest water rates in the area. So we're still able to keep our water, uh, water and sewer fees relatively low. I talked a little bit about the bonds from 2013. This is uh, where, when we started on 
I think that's, is that Blackhawk? I think that's Blackhawk. A while back when we were first doing some portion of Blackhawk, um, back in 2013, voters approved a bond so that we could do some of these big ticket items. These are things that the city can't afford to do with our general fund uh, every year. So we borrow the money using bonds and we built a new fire station. We expanded the library. Uh, we put in some parks. There's Lake Friendswood right there. And uh, we're still working on finishing up Blackhawk there. So again, we're going to do that. Uh, we've just kicked off another citizens advisory team. And we're asking, uh, we've had 50 or 60 people come to, to sit on that team. They've met two times now. And uh, they're going to take a look at what they feel we need as a city in bonds uh, here and talk about putting another bond on the, on the uh, ballot for November. So um, we'll find out. We've uh, done a lot of the work for the drainage from our subcommittee. We're going to feed that information, all that work, over to the bond committee and, and have them prioritize that in with the other things they feel we need. Safest city. I kind of get a chuckle because this slide probably changed twice since we started putting this thing together because every week another organization comes out with another one of their ranking, you know, and, and uh, everybody takes all the same data, the FBI uh, crime data, and kind of factors it in, weights it, and says, you know, what are the safest cities, and Friendswood always comes out in the top ten. You know, typically in Houston we come out number one or number two. If we're number two, it's because of West University. I don't know, uh, you know, they, they sometimes rank number one. Uh, maybe, Chief, we could give some of our criminals a map up there. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, I'm competitive, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just saying. Here's where, here's where West U is, please. Go up there. They got a Walmart, I'm sure. I'm sorry. The recorders in the room, I take all that back. I'm saying. I talked about, you know, we have great employees in this city, and uh, every quarter we identify one of them as our five star spirit award winner. I'm not going to try to say what the five stars stand for because I'll, I'll, okay. Courtesy, competence, reliability, enthusiasm, and. Competency. I, I did say competence. Say courtesy. What? Say courtesy. Courtesy. Okay. These are the good employees right here. So, yeah, please. Thank you. There, hey, we got 230 great employees, but uh, Michael Boyette, Katie Blanchard, James Ruthstrom, and Ashley Hempel. I know a few of you are in the room. Would you all stand up if, if you're here? I know Katie's here. Katie! Yeah, sure. Katie's here. My daughter and Katie are good friends, and Katie spent a lot of time at our house when she was a kid growing up, so I like to take some of the credit for all that. <laughs> so, you, you're doing well, Katie. Um, hey, let me back up one time, Mo. You didn't let me poke fun at you a little bit. Look, look at this guy. Every one of these pictures. Well, I guess Chief took your place in this picture, but at least you're wearing a different tie most of the time. That's, that's, that's well done. So OK, go ahead. Hey, um, before I go on, I want all the employees, because we talked about the, the four that got awards, all the city employees, would you stand up right now, please? Because we got two, like I said. Thank you, thank you. We really do, we really do. Yes. You want to say this is, this, this is a great town, and uh, it is, this city is so well run. Uh, Murad Kabiri and, and uh, the people that, that really run the city, you know, they do a magnificent job with the, all these employees. We are so blessed to have all of them. Uh, some other city department awards. I started looking at this slide trying to, you know, the, the verbiage that goes along with all these awards is, you know, take me days if I was reading it. But uh, let me just say, we, we get every year we get a certificate of achievement for our financial reporting. At least for the last six years, we've gotten a library director's uh, award for, for the great library staff that we have. Our EMS, I already talked about our great EMS. They have got the Mission Lifeline Gold Plus EMS Award from the American Heart Association. And then this one, I think, has to do with our investment uh, strategies and our investment policy, and we get awards for that. So we get a lot of awards here. One of the things that uh, I said, you know, when I was running last year was we need to be more transparent. We heard this from more than one citizen, and so we've really worked on this. And uh, 
I think we've done a pretty good job. In fact, uh, we didn't want to just provide more information. We wanted to provide more valuable information as well. So we've done things like hosting uh, public meetings so that we can inform people about what's going on with EMS billing and regional transportation planning, things like that. And then we've really uh, uh, pumped up uh, Facebook, our YouTube page, Twitter, Instagram, our friendswood.com, our website. And now if you're on our email distribution, you're getting better emails with headlines that sort of point you to the topics that you really want to read. And I think on our electronic newsletter, 60% of those get opened on smartphones. So a lot of people will get those things and find out about what we're doing on smartphones. Another thing we did was Mayor Mike's Minutes. Um, you know, this one, two weeks before we rolled out Simple Recycling, uh, we put this one up and it, uh, it, it had 8,000 views, okay? <laughs> yes, I know. I let them put this in here. Right? <laughs> I think 5,000 of those views were my mother, but 8,000 views. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, uh, we're getting word out, you know, on topics like Simple Recycling and, and uh, we're doing via these videos. And if you like these videos, these videos are Jeff Newfer, our, our communication specialist, Jeff Newfer. Yes. He, he's the man. There he is over there. Jeff writes the scripts. He, uh, he films the, the, the shots. He, he's a cameraman, he, sound man. I'm trying to think of all these. Uh, producer, director, editor. He does everything, you know, and, and so whenever people say, hey, Mike, I love your things, I say, well, it's all Jeff Newfer. And people always say, well, no, but you have to deliver it. And I say, yeah, but you don't understand. Jeff is there, and if I don't do it exactly right, Jeff says, Mike, let's try that one again. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. You know, sometimes it takes an hour to get a 30-second, 90-second spot, you know, tape. So um, anyway, those things are, are working well, and again, it's Jeff. Another thing that we started doing was inviting second graders to city council. You know, this guy, Noah Regner, he's, he's a, he was mayor from Wedgwood for this, this group. And it's been great because I think all the city council members would agree that this is one of our most fun events that we've been doing. And we've had all three uh, elementary schools come in. And um, watch this. The mayor's about to call for the vote here. Noah Regner from Wedgwood. If you can see this, go ahead. Everybody votes but the mayor. <laughs> you know what he said next? He said, the resolution passes, seven nothing. <laughs> Your vote was implied. <laughs> well, that's been great because, you know, family members have come with these second graders, obviously. Uh, a lot of people that have never been inside City Hall get to see, you know, what goes on there. More pictures have been taken during a council meeting at one of those events than probably every picture ever taken in the city council chambers before that. So. That's been great. I'm having a lot of fun with that. We do a lot of fun things here in Friendswood, uh, Santa in the Park. Of course, our Fourth of July celebrations is, is just world renowned. You know, we have the parade, the concert, uh, skydivers, fireworks. Then we have this flapjack run every year. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, another one of the events in the middle there, that's Halloween in the Park. Upper right, that's art in the park. Texas Music Fest, lower right. And this is a picture from Spring Sparkle or Fall Hall, but I don't think it's from last year because it rained both of those days. In fact, I called them Spring Sprinkle and Fall Squall last year. <laughs> it was just, you know, the only thing that I did last year, uh, the only nice day was Memorial Day. Along with our seniors, you know, we celebrate Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and uh, there we are during the Memorial Day celebration, the one sunny day we had on a holiday all last year, I think. Now I'd like to uh, kick off some, a, a new component of these, um, of these State of the City messages. And uh, you know, over the 124 years that Friendswood's been here, you know, we've had a lot of uh, citizens that have done some great things around the community, around the world. In fact, let me point out the Browns and, and uh, let them know that's Jerry Ross right there on the right. Uh, Friendswood astronaut Jerry Ross who flew in space seven times. I don't know how many spacewalks he did, but a lot. So I want to call these things Friendswood legends, okay? These are people that uh, have done things that, w that we're really proud of, people that excelled in a particular field. They have a great connection to Friendswood. We want to honor them in such a way. And this year we have five Friendswood legends. 
Born April 25th, 1928, Lori Whitehead was a longtime Friendswood resident. Her art was displayed in galleries all over the United States and Europe. Later, one of her paintings, Quinto Centenario, was presented to Pope John Paul II. Her work, One Nation Under God, was brought to the attention of President George H.W. Bush and his wife Barbara. Lori later presented that work to them in their Houston home. Her watercolors captured a wide spectrum of subjects from real life contemporary and historical heroes to characters she brought to life. Miss Whitehead's creations were even more remarkable when placed in the context of her life, one that overcame personal obstacles including tragic events and chronic illness. Her works are on display in many public buildings in Friendswood including City Hall and the Mayor's Office. Lori Whitehead, who passed away on December 1st, 2018, is a Friendswood legend. And uh, representing, representing Lori is her daughter-in-law, Nora Whitehead. Will you stand? Thanks. Thanks, Nora. Thanks for being here, Nora. Appreciate you. As I mentioned earlier, Friendswood was founded 124 years ago. Joyce Baker has lived 90 of those years, most of them in Friendswood. Her love for Friendswood has been interwoven with her careers as a family business owner, newspaper editor, school teacher, and author. This is literally true. Joyce Baker wrote the book on Friendswood. <laughs> She's the official historian of the city. Joyce Baker is also a Friendswood legend. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Mary Booker Peroni began her career with the City of Friendswood in 1985 as a reference librarian. Her maiden name was Booker. We should have seen that coming, huh? <laughs> it's probably not a coincidence that as her responsibilities grew, the library grew. Mary became the library director in 1995, the same year there was the addition of a reference area, expanded juvenile area, study room, a new office and storage space. In 2015, over 5,000 square feet of library space was aid added, including a new children's area, meeting and computer spaces, a snack bar, and a covered courtyard. Mary's leadership exemplified award-winning customer service and built the library of the future, now in Friendswood. After 32 years of outstanding and dedicated service to the city of Friendswood, 23 of those years as library director, Mary retired last August. Mary Peroni is a Friendswood legend. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Today we also honor a sixth generation Texan with more than 50 years of public service. Terry Bird joined the Houston Fire Department in 1968 and worked there for 20 years. He served the Harris County Fire Marshal's Office and other positions before joining the City of Friendswood in 1995. Terry has guided the city through hurricanes and other crises as an award-winning emergency operations manager. He was instrumental in acquiring grants for the city in excess of $2 million. He retired in February after 24 years with the city of Friendswood. Terry Bird is a Friendswood legend. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. Congratulations, Terry. How about that mustache? <laughs> With only 40 years of experience in finance and management in a variety of industries, Roger Record joined the city of Friendswood in 1989 as the director of finance. In 1992, he assumed additional responsibilities and was named the director of administrative services. Roger served as interim center city manager in 2006 and again in 2008. After serving that role for more than a year, he became Friendswood City Manager in August 2009. The city and the area grew rapidly during Roger's tenure, presenting new opportunities to be innovative. Roger led a staff that rose to the challenges, making the city and the community of Friendswood what it is today. After 29 years with the city, he retired last April. Today, Roger Recker is a Friendswood legend. Thanks for being here, Roger. This is to remind us that we all need to strive to be legendary. We need to be raising the next generation of legendary Friendswoodian, Friendswood residents. Um, 
I need to be legendary. Everybody needs to be legendary. So um, with that, I'll, I'll turn the microphone back over. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.